Welcome to Nam. David Elfson, how's it been for you? Good, it's only my second day being here. It's, even though it's day three, uh -huh. Thursday I had the Metal Allegiance show uh -huh. uh, with Diet over at the House of Blues. It was really cool. So, um, yeah, I'm just sitting here watching some uh, bootleg videos on our TV. <laughs> <laughs> It's really cool. Um, I caught you the other night with Kings of Thrash. Yeah. Uh, that was over at the Hall of Fame. Yeah, yeah. First time seeing that for me personally. What's it like for you to have both Chris and Jeff Young up there with you? Oh, it's great. I mean, it's funny that the two of them, you know, uh, sort of followed each other, right? Yeah. After Chris came Jeff. And, you know, those two are like best of friends. They're guitar buddies. Uh -huh. um, of course, we unite over a common interest of a band and songs that we were all in together. Uh, that we were all, you know, part of creating that music together. So, you know, it's fun to go back and revisit that as a, um, you know, look, those songs are going to outlive us. You yes. know, they were lucky to be in a band that had that kind of uh, impact on so many people. And yes. It continues to have an impact on, uh, you know, the next generations of, of music lovers. So, you know, for us to go up there and play together, uh, while we can, uh, is a beautiful thing. I mean, you've always, to me, you've always been the glue, the ambassador that brought everyone together. Even a Chuck Byler playing yeah, with you, sure. didn't yeah, you? Yeah. I mean, no one's seen that man for 30 years, no. and you pulled him out. I did. I got him out. And I even brought him out to a, 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 a convention that we had all did an autograph show, yeah. a Hollywood autograph show. And it was funny because there's all these big movie stars. Uh, and then uh, you kind of turn the corner, and this whole row is all of us, you know, of, uh, <laughs> Me and Chris and Jeff and Chuck, you know, so it was, uh, it was, it's cool. You know, I, I am that guy. I'm kind of the bringer together of people and things yeah. and ideas. And, you know, every band pretty much that I've ever been in, I've always been a founding member of. I've yeah, always yeah. started it. And, um, and it's not all me. I mean, you know, my, my tag here is CEO, you know, but it's like a yeah. and copy. But the truth of it is I, I, I learned from when I was here doing artist relations for Peavy many yeah. years ago. I got to know how NAM works, so that's why I could be on the inside of it now, because I learned from that experience, yes. you know. And that was born out of one day Megadeth ended, and I was like, what the hell am I going to do now? And I, you know, I just got resourceful. I picked up the phone and I called, you know, and I asked people. And I think, you know, people ask me what, you know, how musicians, you know, how do you get gigs? And do things. Yeah. First of all, don't be afraid to ask. Pick up the phone. Hey, man, I need a gig. Yeah. You know, um, you know, I was at the top of my feet. Megadeth was huge. Yeah. And I'm calling the phone going, hey, man, my gig is over. My band is done. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the future is ever going to be of that, but, you know, right here's where I am right now. And I had a family to raise. And, you know, and, and don't be too proud, you know, to, um, you know, to, to start over. You know, I've started over many times yeah. in my boat, in and out of Megadeth, and while I've been in Megadeth. You know, and, I mean, so. that's obviously stood you in good stead. Yeah. This time around, you've got the coffee company yeah. going, you've Kings of Thrash, you've yeah. Death as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, talk about some of the other stuff you've got going on. Well, that's it. <laughs> you got to mention it. <laughs> you know, and it's funny because, you know, I think the thing of it is with all these things is even if you have an idea starting a band, starting starting a coffee company is the difference starting a band. Yeah, yeah. You know, you still need a team of people around you. And, you know, I learned in business, you know, if you're the number one guy, hire a number two, three, and four who are better than you. <laughs> you know, don't ha you don't have to be the guy all the time, uh -huh. you know what I mean? My name might be on the door, but, you know, I, I have people around me who, who put this whole thing together while I'm off practicing, writing yeah, yeah. songs, making records. Pamela and the Tani and the team here, you know, they... They put all this together, interfacing uh -huh. with NAM. You know, NAM has been very gracious to us, you know, yeah. to let me, I think I'm the only artist on the floor who has a booth, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Danny Wimmer Festivals, they're very kind to me. Um, when we were doing Chicago Open Air and this stuff, bringing in these artist activations where, yeah. you know, um, you know, we obviously we had the Megadeth Beer, Maynard from Tool has a wine, you know, the people yeah. that are doing, you know, sort of these, these outside ventures. You know, it's nice when the music community will welcome these things in because it, it plays well to, to crossing the bridge from both yes. sides. You know? yeah. um, something else is very exciting today is the Menza documentary. You're going yeah. to be premiere yeah. in the trailer. Yeah. So much love for Nick Menza. I can feel it like from Chris Poland even said to me the other night, if he had known Nick was in the band around Rust in Peace, he would have joined yeah. you know, when he recorded the demos. I mean, that's a big thing. So Yeah, you know, Nick is the beloved son of the legacy. I mean, he really is. You know, that was such a it was such a great era of the group because it was very collaborative. We were together as a team. Um, we we were uh, super prolific. We wrote, you know, and, and just it was, it was just it was a it was a, a fantastic moment in that band's yeah. career, you know. And obviously, we went through a lot of different versions of that. 
Um, and you know, to me, of course, as like the fans, it was it was a favorite one. You know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and unfortunately, you know, after a decade, it, it transitioned. But um, you know, Nick's work and his personality, and I think what we what you see in the film, and again, today's just a short trailer. Yeah. Uh, just because we want to make some uh, make some future announcements here about yeah. when the record was and where the film's coming out. But. Um, you know, the thing with Nick, it was, it was his charm and his personality that came through. He yeah, wasn't yeah. just a musician playing the music. And I think that's the thing that you see, you know, as I grew up a fan of my my bands, you know, Kiss, Van Halen, whoever, Van Lyros, whatever. You know, we, we connected with the group and the music, but we also identified with individual people in the band. Yeah, yeah. And we all have our favorites, you know. So uh, I think it's great to keep Nick's net legacy alive, even though he's no longer here with us. It's as if he's sitting next to us. I mean, yeah, yeah. when you see the trailer and certainly when the film comes out, you'll feel like Nick is in the room next to you. I'm looking forward to that. And, I mean, speaking of favorites, I mean, I'm looking up here and I see Risk, and I think that album is underrated. I yeah. really do. Yeah. I'm probably in the minority. Yeah, what did I, I brought a gold for you. Yeah, what's that up? From, uh, It's an award, anyway. It's an award. I know. I'm trying to say it's all written in Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say, yeah. I went into my, you know, we call it my mega vault, right? I've got yeah. stuff in the house, the closets, storage units and stuff of all these various And you don't get all life. Yeah, I try to keep most of the stuff, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, uh, you know, these are once-in-a-lifetime things, you know, that you get uh, you gold platinum awards, of course, with merch and various things. I try to keep them. Because it's a great memory for me. Yeah. I remember, oh, that's right. I remember that tour. I remember where we were. I remember who was around us. If you had to pick your favorite era or Megadeth album for you personally, what would it be? You know, Countdown to Extinction was a sweet spot. You know, Rust in Peace was a lot of work sort of rebuilding, putting it together. You could feel yeah. things were turning for us. You could feel things were on the uptick. You know, it was a moment in time, too. Yeah. MTV, the, just the genre was really peaking right then. Um, so, you know, and you could just feel we were we were cresting the wave, you know. Um, and then, of course, you know, once Seattle music hit, that was a big turn, you know, in, yeah. in all of our lives. Um, uh, because it was just, you know, it, it was the next generation that was coming up, you know, new metal and all this stuff. But, you know, the 90s in general were up. Huge transitions. Every record, there was no comfort zone. I yeah. Mean, as, as popular as we were, there was no weed laying back. Yo, man, we got this in the bag. Yeah, yeah. Every yeah. year, every album was a whole new like. We could, you know, we were solid from within, but from without, everything was changing. You know, yeah, genres yeah. of music. You know, MTV decided, yeah, we're not playing heavy metal anymore, so it's, we kind of have to reinvent the like, Fifty Writings albums. Yeah, yeah. I mean, every, you know, just like here in these companies in the M. You know, being in a you know, rock band is a business, it is, it, you know, on one level. As much as we enjoy our music and we have our little moment together, you know, when you step out of that little bubble, there's all these other things, you know, that you have to do. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I, I, you know, the, the only thing harder than getting to the top is staying at the top. <laughs> well, listen, you seem to be on top again. Uh, before I let you go, talk to us about what's coming up for you in your immediate future then, what's happening? You know, right after this, I'm going over to Europe for my Bass Warrior Tour. Yeah. And that's sort of a, an extension now of what I started a few years ago called Bass Story. Yeah. Um, and it's sort of an archival going through the history of my career of songs uh, that people know, some solo stuff, and various things yeah. I've done. A um, little bit of storytelling, of course, but and taking it over into like Eastern Europe and and uh, some places that I haven't even been to in a while, some places yeah. that are a little harder to get to, uh -huh. you know, with big bands, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So this is a little smaller, nimble, I can go into more intimate venues, yeah. and it's intentionally designed to be that. Uh, so, yeah, that, that, those are fun. I, I like those, because it's, it's, it's this. You're very yeah, connected yeah. with the people. Excellent. Well, David Elson, thanks so much for your time. Thanks for talking to me.